Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. In this video, we will be talking about in-memory databases. What are in-memory databases? What are the scenarios in which you can use them? And why are in-memory databases important? If you look at in 28 minutes courses, we make extensive use of the in-memory databases. In most of our courses, we make use of H2. Why do we do that? Think about it, right? So whenever you are starting to learn programming, whenever you are trying to focus on learning a framework, let's say you are trying to learn Spring MVC. When you are learning a framework, you would want to be focused on learning Spring MVC. You don't need to want to worry about how to set up a database, how to create tables there and all that kind of stuff. In-memory databases helps you to take the focus away from database and focus on learning something one at a time. Number two is whenever you create an application with in-memory database, you can easily switch out to a real database with small changes in configuration. Number three, you use in-memory databases also in unit tests. Now, we were talking about why for a long time. Let's now take a step back and talk about what. What is an in-memory database? Imagine a real database, right? So Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL. What do you need to do to use them? The first thing you need to do is to install them. The second thing is to create the schemas. And the third thing, is to create the tables and all the definitions and all that kind of fun stuff. With an in-memory database, you don't really need to install a separate database. The database lives inside the memory of the application you are running. So if you're running an application, then inside the memory of your application is where the database is. The database schema is created based on whatever configuration you give to the application. To the application, you can say, I want these tables to be created. Or if you're using JPA, then you can even automate saying, okay, look at the entities which are present and create the entire database automatically at application startup. Isn't that awesome? Because then you are completely focused on creating the application. Once you have a good prototype built out, then you can actually try and use a real database. So what is in-memory database? It's all about using your main memory, your application memory as the primary storage. You do not install a separate database as such. Why do you want to use in-memory database? In unit testing scenarios, you don't really want to depend, depend on external resources like a database. What happens if you depend on external resources like a database? If somebody modifies the data in the database, your tests start failing. And that's very bad. So in unit testing scenarios, you would want to use something which you can depend on, which will not change. And setting up your in-memory database helps you to launch the database in memory, populate the data, run the test, and check the results. So you are separated out from any of the external resources. The other important use of an in-memory database, as we talked about, is quick prototyping. I would want to quickly check whether an idea is working, whether something is working. I can use in-memory database, create a quick prototype and get away with it. And same is the case with learning. You'd want to learn something quickly, focus on it. Don't worry about the database part. The important what parts of the in-memory database are typically the in-memory database supports a subset of the SQL standard. So you need to be really sure that whatever you would want to do is supported. The second important thing is they also offer a browser based console. Once you launch up an application, what you can do is you can go through to the browser and you can actually use it. So for example, over here, I have a Spring Boot application, localhost 81, H2 console is the URL. And over here, when I do a connect, I can look at what is the data inside the in-memory database. I can modify it. I can see what are the different tables which are present. I can write queries, run it. So it's like a web UI. So the in-memory database typically offer a web UI as well. Now examples of in-memory databases are H2 and HSQL. H2 is now one of the most popular ones. 
So if you are trying an in-memory database, I would recommend you to try using H2. Now, how to use an in-memory database? The thing is, using an in-memory database is very, very easy. If you are using Spring Boot, then all that you need to do is go to start.spring.io, go to the Spring Initializer website, and you can add H2 as one of the dependencies for your application. Just type in H2, and you'd be able to add H2 as a dependency. Let's say I would want to use JPA Web. So this would set up an initial application which would be using Spring MVC, connecting to JPA, connecting to H2 database. And it would configure everything that is needed automatically. If you want to manually use H2, then all that you need to do is add H2 dependency to your POM and configure your application to connect to the in-memory database. In this video, we talked about in-memory database. What is an in-memory database? What are the different options that you have? When do you use an in-memory database? And how do you set up a project with in-memory database? In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online, and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.